Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study. As always, subscribe, share, and support. Subscribe wherever it is you are hearing my voice recite and read aloud the very words of God as they are translated into the American language. Well, actually, since we're in the King James Version, the English language, we will cede that to the English. Share the words of God you hear read aloud and recited, and or the copy and paste the link to where you found wherever it is you're listening to, be it YouTube, Anchor, Transistor, Spotify, or Apple, or platforms I don't even know about. And you can support at patreon.com slash aksum. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash A-K-S-U-M. We are in the magnificent scroll of Romans, Paul's epistle to the people of Rome, verses 1 to 4 of chapter 10. Uh, we're doing the whole chapter today. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Here Paul's not directly quoting Hosea, but you could tell he has the spirit of Hosea, that is to say the spirit of God upon him, when Hosea says that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of understanding. Here he recognizes his own people have this zeal or external appreciation and piety for God, but not with knowledge or applied wisdom. He repeats his message from chapter 9 because there are no chapters in his original epistle. There's only his epistle or his, law, his letter to the people of Rome who have trust in Christ Jesus, especially those of the Jewish persuasion, his people according to the flesh. And their salvation, their deliverance, their rescue hinges upon this trust in Christ, in the Anointed One, in the Messiah, through whom alone they will be declared righteous or right or correct before the throne of God upon Judgment Day. Verses 5 to 13. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is Paul's invitation to you to hear Leviticus chapter 18.5, but not alone in light of other scripture. In light of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 12 through 14, in the Anglo-Saxon rite of Christianity, 
there are often mistakes made in reading this passage, decontextualizing it, I should say, reading it without hearing it, by mistaking it as a call to thoughts over deeds. As Paul says elsewhere in Romans, God forbid. This is rather a list, or you can say it's a, an order of operations for you math lovers out there, that begins with God and ends with your thoughts and your words. We'll see in the movement from verses 14 to 17 that the deeds are not neglected, that the deeds are inherently tied to the thoughts and words mentioned in verses 5 to 13. And all of these, that is to say, the thoughts, the words, and the deeds of the hearers of Scripture must match the Scripture, which are the words of God. And we saw in the last chapter, which again, remember, it's all one movement, it's all one scroll of Romans, that Scripture was used interchangeably with God. Verses 14 to 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So here again, the Apostle Paul invites you to hear Isaiah and Nahum, or Nahum, as fanatics or fans of the feet that bring the gospel that bring the news of victory. Let God decide whether it is good or bad news of victory because it is his victory. And that bring the, this news of God and his victory in a timely manner, in a seasonal manner, when that news is most ripe again according to God. So your trust of the Lord comes from these people who were brought there by their feet, who preach to you his word and have you hear it. And hearing is not to be mistaken for mere listening, where it goes in one ear, out the other, as your parents probably rebuked and admonished you as a kid, if not your teachers at school. Rather, this hearing is with ears that hear. This hearing is obedience to that which goes into your ear. Verses 18 through 21. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Here the Apostle Paul hits us with the ultimate sampler of scripture. You get Psalms, Deuteronomy, and Isaiah, the Ketubim, the Torah, and the Nebi'im, the writings, the teaching, and the prophets, the whole Tanakh, the whole Hebrew Bible, to smack you in the face with the one message that if the insiders, or at least those who consider themselves insiders, refuse to hear the message of the Lord, so be it, amen then let outsiders hear and let them become insiders according to the grace and the will of God as he wrote it so that it could be read aloud, recited, heard, 
and obeyed. May God grant us obedience and glory to him.